Welcome, everybody. It's so great to look out and, and see so many faces here tonight uh, in Dakota County. First of all, thank you, uh, Dakota County, for hosting uh, this session for us tonight. And um, I would just like to welcome you all. I am on the Minnesota board of APSI, and I'm also the chair of what we call the Family Involvement Committee. Now, uh, Minnesota APSI is a very action-oriented organization. We believe that people can work, period. We believe that people can work in their communities and contribute to their communities and be viable parts of those communities, earning the same wages, having the same standards and the same expectations as the rest of us do. So with that belief, we set a strategic plan uh, about a year and a half ago to get information to families, to get information to people and their families, good information about Employment First, the Olmstead Act, and also to raise expectations. And, and so that is why we're all really here tonight. And as you might imagine, doing something like that and creating a session like that, or this, doesn't just happen uh, with one person or even just a few people. And it became very apparent we could not do this alone when Sean Roy uh, from Pacer Center, who just spoke a a moment ago, came to one of our Minnesota APSI meetings. And after Sean spoke, we realized uh, that we really needed to draw on some partners. So we met with Sean, and then we started just drawing in more and more partners. And I'm so proud and honored to announce some of the, uh, the partners that we, we have here tonight. And it, it truly is uh, astounding. Uh, we, are, we are joined tonight by Pacer Center, by Awesome, the Autism Society of Minnesota, the Arc of Minnesota, Art Greater Twin Cities, NAMI Minnesota, the Disability Law Center, the Disability Linkage Line, and last but certainly not least, uh, it's a true honor to be in partnership with the Olmstead Implementation Office. And tonight we have not only the Executive Director of the Olmstead Implementation Office, but we also have the Assistant Director. So we have uh, the Executive Director, who is Dr. Darlene Zangara, who will come up in, in just a moment with some opening remarks, and we also have Kristen Jornby, who is the assistant director here with us tonight. So it's been really fun to watch that partnership grow, and we are very aware that it can be bigger, that there are so many other advocacy organizations and membership organizations that reach out to uh, very important, important people that can also be part of our team. And it is now my pleasure and my honor to introduce the executive director of the Olmstead Implementation Office, Dr. Darlene Zangara. Good evening, and thank you for the nice welcome. Um, very nice to see many of you here tonight. Um, I'm Dr. Darlene Zangara, as mentioned, and I'm the director for the Olmstead Implementation Office. How many of you are familiar with the Olmstead plan? Not bad, not bad. So I do have some new information for some of you. It's very exciting. Our office actually has traveled around the state trying to disseminate information about the Olmstead plan as we feel it's very critical. Um, it's an important document for all of you to become familiar about. I'll explain briefly about the Olmstead plan and what that is. Um, it's quite a fascinating story about Olmstead. Um, and it is not named after the county in Minnesota that is in over near Rochester, um, it actually is a case that uh, took place in the state of Georgia back in 1999. And there were two women who worked at a state hospital. Who, who, no. Excuse me, they were living in a state hospital and they were receiving services or receiving care. And um, they were there while getting services um, for their disability. Their team came together and said, we're ready to discharge them. They can go home. As they would leave, they would not have services, shelter, employment. They didn't have anything to be discharged to. So what happened was they ended up staying for an extended period of time. The case went to US Supreme Court, and it was then decided upon that it was unlawful to desegregate people with disabilities in institutions. So instead of segregating them, they set a mandate 
to integrate people with disabilities out in the community. So the Olmstead case was really actually named um, from the Department of Human Services Commissioner in Georgia, it was named after that commissioner. So that's how the name came about. So I asked the question why it's important to us in Minnesota, and it is very important to us. Uh, we had a recent case that was part of a settlement, two parts of a settlement. The first part was to repair some issues that the Department of Human Services needed to resolve. The second and important piece, I'm biased as I mentioned that, is the Olmstead plan, which is a statewide plan. And what that actually is, is a plan where eight state agencies have come together, have held discussions, and talked about how we can improve services and programming and policies which then would provide us a larger, a, a larger and better impact on the quality of life for people with disabilities. Our vision is that every individual who has a disability would be able to live and learn and be employed and be engaged and, and be a meaningful part of their community at their choice. Currently, what we are doing with the plan is it's experiencing some revisions because, you know, there's always room for employment, uh, improvement. Um, the judge has um, mentioned some very specific things that they'd like to see in the plan, one being strong measurement, strong measurement for goals. It needs to be timely, and it also needs to be a realistic fit meaning that it would fit the lives of people with disabilities. So as we look at each individual, we will look at them as a whole person. And we would look at which parts are important to that person, whether it be employment, housing, transportation, education, services, and also community engagement. So those are all of the different parts that we would create different goals that would then ensure that these individuals would be able to be integrated in the community. There are, I could be here all day providing a workshop with each of those categories, but what I'd like to mostly focus on is the employment piece for just a moment. One of the things that we are very proud about that we have accomplished is that the sub-cabinet, who is made up of uh, eight Commissioners. Commissioners, representatives from, state um, from the state agencies. Those eight individuals has, implued, has improved employment first. employment first policies. Back in September of 2014, um, the employment first policy is something that you will learn more about um, as the session goes on, but I believe the critical piece is the message that we are trying to disseminate and put out there in the community before you, is that we would like for individuals to have choices, and we would like for individuals to be informed. And we would like for individuals to experience meaningful integration. It wouldn't be a one-size-fits-all model. It would um, diversify, it would focus on individuals and their need. So that is a very condensed and brief overview. Please keep your eye on the Olmstead plan. Um, we do have a new one that has been submitted um, to the courts July 10th, or as of July 10th, and we are very excited about that. So if you are more interested and would like more information, please come and see me, uh, or you can also um, see my coworker. Her name is Kristen Jornby, and she is in the back uh, in a red shirt. Um, so I do have some information that we can share as well, and we would be happy um, to uh, come and give your group more information, or if you would like a one-on-one -on -one session, please call us because we are looking for feedback as well as your stories. So I wish you all good luck uh, in your progress and um, learning more about what's before us tonight and what employment is about. Thank you for your time.